Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. This is Christian Posta from Solo.io. And in this quick video, we're going to take a look at some of the support for VMs based, VM based services in Istio. Specifically, some of the functionality that's coming out in Istio 1.7, which we can see is almost out. It'll, it'll, it'll come out very shortly. Uh, but it's also based on enhancements that came in Istio 1.6. So if we come back here and look at the release announcement for 1.6, we can see that there was this workload entry resource that was, that was added. And this workload entry resource allows us to capture the details about a specific VM and treat it as a first class citizen with the rest of the services in the mesh that might run in Kubernetes. So we're going to build on that. And what we're going to look at specifically is the bootstrapping process of getting the Istio sidecar running on a VM and using some of the new features in Istio 1.7. Specifically, here's the release notes before it's actually published here. Um, how we can bootstrap the identity of the VM from a service account that runs inside of Kubernetes. So we can use this token, it's a short-lived token, give it to the sidecar basically, and you let it connect up to the Istio control plane and use that identity that comes from a service account in Kubernetes to ultimately get issued its uh, certificates and, um, and connect up to the rest of the service mesh. So when the docs are released, Again, when 1.7 is coming out, it's very, very sh uh, shortly. We will have a page that looks like this and that will walk you through these different steps. And so what I'm going to demo to you is um, based on the, the steps that we see here. So, so for example, here we're uh, getting the token from that for that service account. We're grabbing the, the root CA for, for Istio D and, uh, and setting up the rest of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our demo here. First thing we're going to show is our Kubernetes cluster. So we do have Istio 1.7 running here in our Kubernetes cluster. We also have services that um, are injected with the Istio sidecar running in the default namespace here. So part of the demo getting this uh, now the VM functionality in place is to connect up to a VM, which we'll do here running in GKE, and start to go through the steps that were outlined in that doc. And actually, we have a TMUX session here, right? Yeah. All right, so this is our VM. Now, what we're going to do is in this demo, we're going to first, we're going to prepare the namespaces for our demo. And here's to take a look at it actually. So what, what we're doing here is we're gonna create the namespace where we wanna store the record of the, the VMs that we're using. And we also wanna create a service account that will ultimately be the source of identity for the services that run inside of the VM. So we created this namespace, created this service account. That's all good. The next thing that we want to do is create the bootstrapping file. So this includes the token, this includes the root CA, and some of the environment variables that we'll, we'll need here. So if we look at our work folder here, we, we have a couple of uh, helper scripts that so we'll take a look at that in a second. But what we have here in that we that we generated was basically like I said the root cert. So if we look at the root, this is the root cert that comes uh, when Istio bootstrapped itself. This is what Istio is using as the the signing certificate for all of the workload identities. We can see we have our Istio token. This is that short-lived token that was generated from the token review API in Kubernetes based on the service account. And we have a few other environment variable based 
things here. So what we want to do with that set of files, if we look at it again, what we want to do with this set of files is transfer these files over to the VM because this is what's going to be used to bootstrap the, the environment and, and the sidecar and Envoy proxy. So um, again, the, the steps in that, that we're taking to create these files, they're all going to be in the documentation. So I'm not going to go into that um, too deeply. Okay, so now let's go ahead and transfer those files over to the VM. Give that a second. We see our work directory got created, sent over. So now if we do this, we should see work. And we do, let's do, open it up and go into it. So now we have our files here, same files that we just took a look at earlier. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run this prep VM script that I have here. And what this is going to do is basically put the certificate and the token in the correct location on the VM so that the proxy sidecar can find it. We'll install it. Here we can see we're using Istio 1.7 uh, release candidate 3. We'll install the proxy um, and then finish setting up some of the other variables. Again, these steps are listed in the docs right here. So again, we won't go into it that deeply, but we're going to run it. So we're going to prepare the VM here. And we'll give that a few moments. So this is doing an update and hopefully it doesn't take too long for here. But you can see that is the first step in our document uh, upgrade. And then we start putting the things where they need to go. Give that a second. All right, that looks good. Installed the sidecar, installed the um, environment variables and the certificates and so forth. Okay, that looks good. Now, if we look in our list of services that are running on or available to run on this particular VM, we should see the Istio service here. I'm not sure why it's in a failed state. Let's continue with the demo and see if that sorts itself out. Let's try that. Let's let's start it. Um, so if we start it, if we come back here, then it looks a little bit better. Okay, so it's just not started. Uh, we can see our Istio service is here and it is running just fine. If we want to tail the logs, we can run um, well, run this command. And we see some things have happened. <laughs> the logs have come up. We can even take a look at the error log and uh, take a look to see. Um, it looks like we had some trouble connecting to the uh, XDS for some reason. Um, but let's continue on with the demo and we'll see. I think it, it actually did connect. I think it uh, either is from a previous run or it stalled for a second, but it should. It should connect correctly. All right. Now for this demo, I did happen to set up DNS mask so that we can call into the Kubernetes cluster directly. Um, if I look at the DNS mask file here, the most important part is this, where we're going to try to resolve the service that cluster that local, um, domain names and we'll return this this IP address also, also always which happens to be the um, the sitter range for the Kubernetes services that get created um, so just to verify that let's come over here let's look at the service uh, these are 10 dot 44 dot whatever right um, so that's what we've added into the DNS mask to make that work and so that should be good the next thing the last thing that we want to C is um, that's the Envoy is running and it is running, so that looks good. And then part of the magic of Istio and the and the running sidecar is redirecting the traffic, whether that's inbound or outbound, from this VM through the proxy. All right. So we do expect tables. Look at the NAT table. We do expect rules here that will match on 
um, particular inbound ports in this case, um, as well as the, the, the Kubernetes services, any of the Kubernetes services, and, and should route them in, into the proxy so that we get to take advantage of Envoy's powerful routing capabilities and so forth. So what we have here is a running Envoy. We have the rules set up so that if we make a call to some of the services in the service mesh from this VM, that they should complete successfully. The last sanity check we do want to uh, do here is let's take a look at the configuration from Envoy and verify that a service like let's say HTTP bin service does indeed exist in the config here and we do see it. So that means the proxy was able to connect up to the control plane that if we take a look at uh, var run secrets Istio, I believe. We can see that we were able to connect up to the control plane. We were able to get configuration dynamically. So we can we know about the HTTP bin services. We also were able to generate uh, keys and workload cert certificates. So if we do a uh, curl localhost certs, we can see that the certs were all set up correctly using that, that short-lived token. And things look to be as, as though they're in a good shape here. If we try to do a curl, we'll do dash v just in case things go wrong. Uh, it should be bin dot, uh, is it default? Service dot cluster dot local. And I believe that's on 8,000. And headers, if we call this from the VM, we should get the expected response, which is the HTTP bin response. And you can see that it is using the spiffy identifier of this VM, which we set up once the sidecar was installed and communicated with the, pro with the control plane, got its certificates, was assigned an identity based on the service account, remember that we had set up. And, uh, and now the, and the traffic works. So going from the VM to the rest of the service mesh, the, the proxy, the sidecar proxy on the VM handles that communication. Now, this video has actually gotten a little longer than I thought it would. So we're going to stop here. And in the next video, we'll take a look at running a service on the VM. And then from the service mesh, the rest of the service mesh, we're going to call into this VM. And you should see that the mechanism of the, you know, making calls to services within the mesh is the same and it's consistent whether you're on the VM or whether you're in the service mesh. So stay, stay tuned to the next video.